and welcome to Tuesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. Hopefully you all had a great week in VR, I know I have, and a lot happened too. Remember the new full body trackers from Tundra Labs? Well, another company is about to start making their own full body tracking solutions. Plus, huge breaking news about PSVR 2, fresh info on two new VR headsets has also dropped. Now, finally, let's just get get right into the news. A recent article on MarketWatch actually is pretty interesting and is a very different take on the modern VR industry than what we normally see. Most of the time when we have conversations about VR and AR, we often talk about the near future as if VR is going to magically take off and be a massive industry overnight. And we all know that's just not going to happen. That's not how things work. The whole industry takes years to establish, good developers have to be made, and a solid consumer base has to be built up. It's just the way things go. But but that hasn't stopped some market analysts from being very optimistic about VR's future. This article is a nice break from the usual VR is dead that we see all too often, and is instead extremely positive. Quote, Virtual reality will be a trillion dollar marketplace within five years. Here's a good example why. End quote. By Cody Willard. Basically, the author got a Quest 2, ended up loving it so much that they bought one for every one of their family members, and has since seen how much potential VR has to change the entire internet entertainment market forever. The article is not very substantiated, and it's nothing more than an opinion piece, but it's still a refreshing thing to see the general tone of virtual reality shift from one of skepticism and disappointment as we've seen in previous articles, to one of incredible positivity, especially regarding the potential of working from home using virtual reality in the future. The article ending with, quote, Virtual derivative reality is perhaps what this working environment inside the VR headset should be called. It will be a trillion dollar marketplace within the next half decade, end quote. So I love full body tracking for VR. I've made lots of videos about it in the past, and I'm going to make a lot more in the future. I've been a big fan of the technology, but it's always kind of sucked that HTC was literally the only company making full body tracking that was affordable. Then recently, Tundra Labs announced that they are going to be releasing their own full body trackers to be used with laser tracking later this year. And although that has been delayed a couple of months, another company has announced that they are going to be making their own full body trackers as well. And this is actually a really cool company that I've talked about in the past, Manus. Manus has previously focused on creating super high quality motion capture and glove technology for the professional crowd, and this is the new Steam VR Pro Tracker from Manus. And it's not any cheaper than the competition, but it does offer a few pro features, fast charging interchangeable batteries, and a smaller size than normal trackers, and a Manus universal mounting system for their gloves, and it also starts making sense. It's a compact, professional-oriented Steam VR tracker that works better with Manus's own systems. Coming in at $300 a tracker and expecting to ship by quarter two of 2021, I should actually be getting some of these so I can test these trackers versus the old Vive trackers versus Tundra Lab trackers at some point, but we'll see whenever we get closer to that. Well, uh, breaking news actually as I'm writing this this morning, Sony has officially announced a next-generation VR system and it will be coming to the PlayStation 5. This has been announced today, actually, by PlayStation Senior Vice President. Over the past couple of years, we've seen Sony patent many new VR devices from controllers to headsets and other tracking methods, but we haven't heard anything actually concrete regarding a PlayStation VR 2 or whatever new is coming from VR from Sony. In fact, PlayStation CEO infamously said just last year that VR won't be a meaningful part of gaming for years. Uh, that's didn't age very well. Well, looks like the insane sales numbers of Oculus Quest 2 have convinced Sony that maybe sooner is better than later, and I'd agree. Hideaki Nishino from Sony had this to say, quote, Today, I am pleased to share that our next generation VR system will be coming to PlayStation 5, enabling the ultimate entertainment experience with dramatic leaps in performance and interactivity. Players will feel an even greater sense of presence and become even more immersed in their game worlds once they put on the new headset, end quote. More more interesting details are hidden throughout the article, and I'll basically put together what Sony is promising with PSVR 2 or whatever it's going to be called. It's explicitly stated that these things will improve or change. Ease of use, 
resolution, field of view, tracking, and input, and it will have all new controllers that Sony says they are very excited about. Quote, one of the innovations we're very excited about is our new VR controller, which will integrate some of the key features found in the DualSense wireless controller along with a focus on great ergonomics, end quote. And one thing that I can really hope for from Sony are some massively upgraded VR controllers that utilize finger tracking like on Valve Index's Knuckles, along with the PlayStation 5's force feedback triggers that physically resist your finger pulling the trigger. Just seems like a no-brainer to be added into VR if you ask me, it's the best controller out there. Sony was obviously extremely careful not to give any actual specifics of the new VR devices from PlayStation, instead giving pretty blankety statements as to how much it will be improved over the last PSVR. It is said in this article that Sony will not be launching any new VR devices in 2021, and this is instead an early update for fans. All in all, this was an incredibly exciting announcement, and I'm pumped to see what Sony has to bring to the table. At the end of the day though, even though I don't agree with all of Sony's exclusive strategies and some of their philosophies regarding VR in general, we kinda need Sony's competition here, and we need it now, and I'd much rather have them here in the VR space than not. And obviously, I'll be keeping everybody updated regarding PSVR news coming up soon. But now, it's time for a meme break! New VR Gamer I really want hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, but I'm going to wait for it to go on sale on Steam. <laughs> Me after realizing the game has been $20 since the day it launched and has never gone on sale. <laughs> and yeah, there's a couple of VR games that legit will just never go on sale. H3 VR is one of them, so don't expect it. I've seen people wait literally an entire year and, uh, and yeah, it just won't happen. <laughs> and while I don't necessarily agree with that philosophy, I will say the game is worth the money full price, even if it's a little confusing for people expecting it to go on sale one day. But now, back to the news, and we've got lots of hardware news still. Uh, really just a lot of fun hardware-related talk today. It's not very often that I get to talk about four or five different pieces of hardware in one Tuesday news day. But I have talked about the Lynx R1 plenty of times before. It's a pretty awesome-looking new XR headset from French startup Lynx, expected to launch later this year after quite a few delays to around $1,500. The headset contains the Snapdragon XR2, eye-tracking, and a crazy new optical technique that bends visuals through a prism to bring it to your eyes. Well, since this device is an XR device, it is capable of pass-through, which you can see here in mixed reality mode. This is just a short sneak peek from Lynx, and honestly, it looks pretty incredible. I think the last time I saw mixed reality look so clear and good was from the much more expensive Vario XR3, which is another really cool enterprise-level headset that has released recently. And I can imagine that the Lynx is looking to compete with directly. Lots of really cool tech is being put into these expensive mixed reality headsets, and I bet a lot of it will eventually make its way down into consumer level headsets, even if these aren't necessarily the headsets that you'll be using anytime soon. And a brand new headset from JVC of all companies with a pretty wide field of view has just received a release date of next month, that being March-ish of 2021. Now this headset is pretty interesting because it uses a completely different display technology from other VR headsets, that being a proprietary mirror display that allows up to 120 degrees FOV with a respectable resolution of 2560 by 1440 per eye. JVC's headset is also a Steam VR tracked headset, so wands or knuckles and base stations would be required. There's no current price available, and it seems that this headset is focused on the enterprise market in Japan at the moment, but it's still interesting to see completely different display technologies being used in VR headsets for different purposes. The best example for this projection technology is you can have a direct view in reality for things like gauges or instruments clusters while the virtual view can be projected where it needs to be within the view. It's hard to think that the Google Glass is eight years old now, originally released in 2013. And I remember just how incredibly excited I was for the Google Glass. I mean, the marketing video that Google created really sold me on the device, but we all know by now that the Google Glass eh, sort of failed and was way ahead of its time, falling flat in so many areas from battery life to capability and social acceptance, weirdly enough. But it seems that it's 
finally time for AR and smart glass technology. Two leaks have recently surfaced featuring Samsung AR devices, and these leaks are from leaker Walking Cat, which is the same guy that has leaked multiple AR and VR devices, including the original leaks for the Oculus Quest 2. So the guy has a very solid track record. Two devices seem to be shown here. A pretty simple set of smart glasses that don't appear to have any sort of tracking capability and are made primarily for media consumption or simple virtual overlays, but the other device seems to be a full-on augmented reality device with hand tracking as well as spatial tracking. Nothing more has been said on these devices, and it's important to note that these two AR devices are likely either just on paper or are early concepts, but it's still really cool to know that Samsung will be fully involved in the AR race of the future, which is heating up extremely quickly. Apple, Facebook, Samsung, Google, everyone seems to want in, and it's getting crazy really fast, and I'll definitely keep you guys updated on AR happenings in the future. So this one's a little older, but it's something I really wanted to bring up, and I think a lot of people will find interesting, whether you're a VR developer yourself, or you want to be one, or you just love VR and games, and you're like me, and you like Apex Legends. Ben Lang, executive editor for Road to VR, recently posted a short video of a demo bringing a faithfully recreated wingman from Apex Legends into VR. Now, I know I've been wanting Apex Legends in VR for a long, long time. It's kind of a dream of mine. So even seeing the wingman operate so true to Apex is pretty impressive while in VR. There's a full article on the challenges and hardships and things you don't think about when bringing something like an established gun with character like the wingman into VR, and it's absolutely worth the read. But I guess whether you actually read it or not, just seeing it done is pretty cool as is. But now it's time for question of the week from Jamie Etheridge. What retro game, or any game for that matter, would you like to see ported into VR? And my favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy VII, and I, I don't know if you call that a retro game or not, but it, it is getting pretty old, and I would love to experience Midgar in VR. It's a dream of mine to pull out a Buster Sword and, and Limit Break all in VR, I guess. And that's question of the week. Don't forget to leave your own below, I may just answer yours next. And I will be streaming on Twitch today, so stop on by, I'd love to see you there in chat. And if you're interested in one of the best VR communities on the planet with meetups and game nights and more, come on in and join in my Discord server and make yourself some VR friends. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Atomaly, Benji, Biz, Caution Ramen, CPCJ79, Debonair Fab, Birdtrap, Fusion Oak, HCG Randon, KR, Lucas, Mud King, That Brock Guy, Token Engineer, Very Evil Shadow, Zale, and I'm Naku. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.